Hello everyone, I hope that you all are fit and fine and let me tell you that I am completely fine as well. I welcome you all to the second video of the amendment lecture series for the May 2022 examinations for CA Intermediate Income Tax Syllabus. Okay, so in the previous video we had this, we have finished the basic concepts, we had finished the residential status chapter and then also we had started with the PGBP chapter. In the PGBP chapter now only one amendment is remaining which we will discuss in this particular video. Okay, <clears throat> before beginning the video, my again, my request is please like this video, subscribe this channel and share it with your friends. Now without further ado, let us start. So, we know that depreciation is allowed only if three conditions are satisfied. Condition number one is that the assessee should be the owner of the asset. Condition number two, the asset should be used for business or per profession and condition number three is that the asset should be a depreciable asset asset should be a depreciable asset now i we know that there are two types of depreciable assets tangible assets and intangible assets in this video i am going to discuss about tangible assets so tangible asset is itself a class of an asset and tangible asset includes know-how patent copyright trademark license franchisee or any other business or commercial right of similar nature till the previous examination this was the definition that we were learning about intangible assets now what has happened now what has happened the definition of intangible asset has changed and it is including the wording not being goodwill of business or profession bp means what business or profession <clears throat> so now goodwill of a business or goodwill of a profession cannot be told that it is a depreciable asset earlier what we used to do see here earlier we used to tell that purchased goodwill will be considered as any other business or commercial right of similar nature and we used to claim depreciation on goodwill being an intangible asset now so many people were avoiding paying the tax or reducing their tax liability by claiming huge amount of depreciation on goodwill. The government lost tax revenue and that is why it came out with an intention that as and when the business grows, the goodwill of the business only grows. It does not diminish. That is why goodwill is not a depreciable asset. It appreciates through time. That is why from intangible asset, it has told that intangible asset will not include goodwill of a business or profession. And that too, this change has been brought out from 1-4-2020 onwards itself. Look here. See, Kanna. Goodwill of a business or profession is not eligible for depreciation right from previous year. Once again. Right from previous year 2021. From previous year 2021 itself. That is from 1-4-2020. 20 okay but you need not get confused that for previous year 2021 it means what this is a retrospective amendment retrospective amendment means what going back in time and changing the law is called retrospective amendment so the finance minister through the budget in finance act 2021 came with a retrospective amendment that from 1 4 2020 itself good will not will not be considered as depreciable asset so now what to do can we go back in time and change answer is yes because before the year end itself the finance minister had come with the amendment that is why when the year was going on that time itself people were knowing that depreciation could not be claimed that is why no big of a deal at all all the calculation is going to be normal calculation only it is a very very simple task so what we have to do let me tell you okay how to change the value of goodwill as on 1 4 2020 very very simple step number one find out the value of goodwill as on 1 4 2020 how to find out the value of goodwill take the purchase cost of goodwill and from that reduce the depreciation through the number of years for which it was used by the SSE till the previous year 1920 okay till previous year 1920 then what you will get you will get closing WDV as on 31 3 2020 or you can also call it as opening WDV as on 1 4 2020 that is the first step okay then what is second step find out the value of intangible asset as on 
2020. So intangible asset will contain goodwill, correct? Till previous year 1920. So take the goodwill and reduce it from the intangible asset. So you will get if you do step two minus step one, what you will get? You will get the value of intangible asset, which will not contain the goodwill, which will not contain the goodwill. After finding out such value of intangible asset without the goodwill. After that, do the normal calculation like how you do it for depreciation. So after that, what you should do from one four twenty twenty onwards, add the purchase, reduce the sale if any, then reduce the depreciation. You will get the closing WDV. This will be the opening WDV as on one four twenty twenty one. After that, also start doing the normal calculation. Very very simple, Karna. <coughs> See, let us see an example. Let's say a trademark was purchased on first of May two thousand nineteen for twenty lakh rupees, and goodwill was purchased even before that on thirtieth of June two thousand eighteen for ten lakh rupees. Now, what we should do? As on one four, we should remove the as on one four twenty twenty, we should remove the value of goodwill from the intangible asset, and later on we have to do the calculation. So firstly, what you will do? Find out the value of goodwill as on one four twenty twenty. For that, first take the purchase price. When was it purchased, Karna? In the given example, it is purchased on in previous year two thousand eighteen nineteen. So now what we have to do? Reduce the depreciation of two lakh fifty thousand. Okay, two lakh fifty thousand, which is twenty five percentage. You will get value as on one four two thousand nineteen. That is seven lakh fifty. From that, in previous year nineteen twenty, reduce the depreciation, so you will get value as on one four twenty twenty, that is five lakh sixty two thousand five hundred. Fine. Now come to the next part. Next step. What is the next step? Calculate the value of the intangible asset block as on one four twenty twenty or thirty one three twenty twenty. Okay, whatever. So as on how to calculate the value. Normally, we are going to calculate the value. Firstly, take the depreciation which was there in previous year eighteen nineteen. So the depreciation is two lakh fifty thousand. After which, you will get the closing WDV as on one four two thousand and nineteen. After this, what we are going to do now? We are going to add the patent purchased in previous year nineteen twenty. Add the patent value because patent is also intangible asset, correct? So it is the same block. All the intangible assets are covered in the same block. So what will be the total? Twenty seven lakh fifty thousand. From this, reduce the depreciation at twenty five percentage as usual. You will get the WDV as on thirty one three twenty twenty, or also you can call it one four twenty twenty. It is the same. Fine. So now you have found out. The WDV as on one four twenty twenty for goodwill also and for the total intangible asset also. So now what you should do? Goodwill should not be a depreciable asset from one four twenty twenty onwards. That is why the value of goodwill you are going to reduce from the value of intangible assets. Reduce from the value of intangible assets. See. So value of goodwill we found out five lakh sixty two thousand five hundred. Now reduce it from the value of intangible assets. Okay. Five lakh sixty two thousand five hundred. You will get fifteen lakhs as the balancing figure. This fifteen lakhs is the value of intangible asset which does not include goodwill, which does not include goodwill. You get my point. That is why now from here onwards. Now what has happened? Goodwill has been successfully eliminated from the block of intangible asset, and from now onwards, calculate the depreciation normally. Calculate the depreciation normally. Very very simple. Okay. Now one more point is there, Karna. See, earlier goodwill used to be a part of the depreciable asset block. That is why the capital gain on goodwill used to be calculated under section fifty, which is capital gain for depreciable assets. Now, since the goodwill is not a part of depreciable asset, is it a capital asset? Answer is yes. It is a capital asset. But it will not be a depreciable capital asset. So now, how to determine the cost of goodwill as a capital asset? Very very simple. This five lakh sixty two thousand five hundred, which you reduced from the intangible asset block, will become the cost of the goodwill. Will become the cost of the goodwill for capital gain calculation. So under section fifty five, it is going to become cost of the 
goodwill okay one second i hope you are clear so then after that previous year 21 22 as usual you do the calculation and then however note amount of goodwill which is to be reduced cannot exceed the wdv of intangible assets wdv of intangible assets so now what if in this calculation the wdv if at all this comes as 25 lakh 62500 what if it comes as 25 lakh 62500 in such case what to do can you reduce one second <coughs> can you reduce 25 lakh 62500 from here answer is no because if you reduce 25 lakhs from 20 lakhs then the value will be minus 5 lakhs it will become minus 5 lakhs minus 5 lakhs cannot be a value of an asset that is why maximum how much you can reduce you can reduce maximum only 20 lakhs 62500 that is what i have already told you let's see here amount of goodwill reduced cannot exceed the value of the intangible asset block you get my point i hope you are clear with this so this is how you will exclude the value of goodwill from the value of the intangible assets that you are getting and then the value that you exclude from intangible asset is going to become the cost of the goodwill in the capital gain chapter while taking the capital gain amendments i am not going to repeat this point i am taking that point here itself okay so this was all the amendments that are there in the pgbp chapter now the pgbp chapter also you can learn thoroughly and obviously you are also going to get the revision lectures for pgbp chapter which are available on my youtube channel you can see those revision revision lectures revise pgbp and score good marks in the examinations after practicing the questions so i wish you all the best and with the remaining exam remaining amendments we will discuss in the next video onwards see you in the next video dear till then take care bye bye